the last two races and the fourth position. So, uh, especially the last few races. Amazing performance by Emilio Chacle. Very strong as well, Eduard Lapidot, the Russian, WP in Greek, Simon Desvieux in seventh, followed by Dio Maillet and the new shooting star from Norway. From Norway, this is Siva Guton Bakken. He is in the ninth position and the best of Austria is Simon Eda in twelfth position. With 98 points. Letztes Jahr war es definitiv ein skandinavischer Wettspieler hier in Offizner bei den Damen, bei den Herren, vor allem dann in der Woche 2 gab es einen, ich glaube damals drei- oder vierfachen Damenerfolg und äh, fast selbiges auch äh, bei den Herren. Für die Österreicher heute hier am Start bei diesem Sprintwettkampf mit der Startnummer 6, Simon Eder mit 27, jetzt ist Felix Leitner mit 44, Patrick Jakob. Patrick Jakob und noch ein junger Österreicher in der Ein 
ein großes Dankeschön also an das gesamte Organisationskomitee mit ihren vielen, vielen Helfern. Es gab viele Sitzungen, immer wieder wurde natürlich auch das Programm aufgrund der eben vorhandenen Situation umgeworfen. Aber etwas war klar, die Motivation war von der ersten bis zur letzten Sekunde immer spürbar, egal ob mit Zuschauern oder ohne Zuschauer. Die Freude ist groß, dass die IPU der Biathlon-Verband eben hier wieder im Biathlon-Spital in Hochschützen vor Ort. Ja, und das Ganze ist jetzt übrigens die 20, 26 Platz in Weltcup 4 in Hochschützen sind also in den nächsten Jahren gesichert. Wir waren natürlich da zum Sehen von Dietrich Jakob Bach der Slowene. Er war in der Ebene schon bei zwei Sprints, einmal 13. und einmal 60. Er wird also in Kürze das Rennen hier in Hochschützen 11. Ja, 13. mit zweimal äh, Null Fehler. 13 Place for Jakob Bach, der First Sprint in Episode. Uh, the clean shooting and then at the second uh, sprint. Uh, one uh, mistake, first shoot uh, and uh, two mistakes there in the standing position, so that was the reason why he was not top uh, in the second sprint. In Hochschützen letztes Jahr im Sprint als 28. und als 11. platziert. Also voriges Jahr waren ja zwei Veranstaltungen, zwei Wochenende hier in Hochschützen, deswegen auch zwei Ergebnisse für Jakob Bach, der also in gut zwei Minuten das Rennen hier eröffnen wird. Silver Medalist, by the way, Jakob Bach in Björn This was the last, uh, the second last medal, by the way, for Dominik Landerdinger. He was uh, behind Jakob uh, third and then he won uh, Dominik the medal in uh, Anton. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Hochwitzen and Stability Dark say hello to the Biathlon family and we are looking forward to all of you fans 2022. Schöne Grüße, wo immer ihr gerade zuschaut. So the third meet of the season. And it's a fairly punishing routine. I was thinking last night whether the cross-country skiers or the biathletes got it easier, Mike. Uh, I, I think in many ways the cross-country skiers have a slightly easier program. It does seem that way uh, with racing on mainly on the Saturdays and Sundays. And then you've, you've got the sprint races, so you've, you have out-and-out -out sprinters. Some, of course, double up. But I think this program is, is pretty full on, as it has always been so. Franz Berger, the long-time servant of this area and to Austrian biathlon. Good to see him. He's still, uh, he's still there and he still also has his position in the IBU. So we've got men who have won World Cups going first and last in today's race. That's a rarity. Uh, Dominic Vindisch, of course, two wins back in 16 and 19. And starting the race off for us today is Jakob Fak of Slovenia. And it'd be interesting to see how he gets on. Eight wins in, in total. Uh, always surprises me when I see that number. Uh, but then again, you have to remember the last of those came back in 2015. Scott Gow is three. Sima of Slovakia starting four ahead of Mukin for Kazakhstan. 30 second intervals. So starting first is Jakob Fak. He'll be hoping he's the first to the range. Now the first part of this course is uh, relatively easy. You disappear down the valley after a little climb, very short little climb that we'll see in a second as he breaks to the right. Uh, and then it's all gradual downhill with a couple of uh, detours up into the woods on the right hand side. But uh, it can be misleading, can't it, Mike? Because what goes down has to go back up again. And, and it's a long, long, drawn-out climb up the valley. Yes, uh, from, from the low point, just 1.2 kilometres down the valley, it's all climbing practically, except the descent to the range. Gusic, 30-year-old uh, now, from Poland. Uh, hasn't had a great start to his season, Patrick, uh, with a, what, 114th and a 107th last uh, in the two sprint competitions so far. Yeah, I've, I've noticed his last shoot is always a bit scrappy. He's yet to hit more than three on his final shoot of a race. So that's uh, certainly an area that, where he can improve. 
Scott Gow. Well, we saw some good stuff from uh, the two Gow brothers up in Ustersund. Let's see if they've managed to keep that form going. He's 31 now, comes from uh, Canmore, of course, the venue for the 1988 Olympic Games. And, uh, well, I guess uh, Scott, like many others, inspired by that and uh, benefiting from the fact that they've continued to develop the facilities there. Yes, uh, uh, one of the wax technicians uh, saying today that the snow is very much like Canadian powder snow today, the heavy snowfall yesterday, and it's very fluffy and soft snow. Starting for Miha Shima for Slovakia, and uh, comes from a place called Velaska. I'm not familiar with it, but nearly everyone in this field might except for the British when they were competing had snow outside their back door uh, how big a factor do you think that is uh, it's it is a huge factor if you're in terms of development uh, all of these athletes uh, as Mukin sets off they're developed very young uh, introduced to snow and cross-country skiing uh, age four or five six and then developed from say seriously from six seven eight year old as was uh, Simon Eder, I remember him skiing around the World Cup tracks when his father was racing when he was six year old. He's still going at 38. Yeah, not for long though. This should be, will be his last uh, series of World Cup races here in Hockfilson. So uh, he's going to get a fantastic reception at the end of the weekend. And uh, what a servant he's been for the Austrian team. 38, as you say, Mike, comes from South Eldon. Uh, and not a bad start to the season. He's still ranked in the top 12 of the World Cup standings. As we go back to Jakob Fack, here's the first little climb at 1.1. It's a steep climb as well. It doesn't show it as always on the camera, but that's a 21% gradient climb just after 1.1 kilometers. Yeah, for those of you new to biathlon, this is uh, a 10 kilometer race. Uh, and it's split into three, so three laps of just over 3.3 kilometres to make up the distance. The first prune, pr the first uh, shoot in the prone position, the lying down, and then they go to the stand. As we see, uh, Oli Hidensalu of Finland. The Finns do seem to have raised their game a little bit this year. Wow, we have to wind the clock back a long, long way before they were, was it 2011? And before that, well, before that, 2001. Two th yeah, 2001. <laughs> 2001, Pukuka. wasn't it? Pakuka, yeah. Uh, on the podium many times there. But uh, I think, uh, and the next Finn uh, on the start sheet, I really feel good about Tero Sepala. Uh, he's 25 year old now, two times 16th in the first World Cup. So if he hits 10 today, for me, he's a top five. Johannes Kern, starting for Germany becoming a regular fixer didn't didn't actually race in the first round of racing up in Östersund. uh health issues but uh, he's been pretty solid since 12th and the 14th in the sprint and the pursuit last week that's a solid start to his season picking up some good points as we see Dmitry Lazuski had a Minsk uh, young man 23 a lot of learning to do top 60 is okay uh, he knows he can do better than that. He did better than that last weekend. I think top 30 is probably his target for today. Now, Gigina, Mike. Um, the beard has been reduced somewhat. <laughs> we'll <laughs> see if that helps. Uh, he looks a whole lot younger. He does, and uh, he likes the sun. Remember, uh, I think uh, it was when he was racing on his home stadium. He lay in the sun like a lizard after his zeroing. And uh, he said he just needed to unwind and uh, reach the podium on that day. Hopefully the sun earlier, <laughs> he's managed to do the same thing. Simonator with uh, respectable time, 1.4 skiing speed, no longer, or oh, it's never really been his strength. It's uh, shooting accuracy, shooting speed. And actually Simonator shooting really well this year hasn't missed a prone target yet that's outstanding isn't it uh, and he had of course the highest stats out of everybody last season and probably will again this year mm -hmm. 
So Bormolini about to get underway. 30-year-old now from Livigno. Livigno, so many of the teams that were down in Livigno this summer because of the Olympics being at such high altitude. Uh, training there September, October, November. Many, many teams. And uh, what a wonderful place that must be to, to live. Well, Martin Ponsiloma, it didn't start well with his 79th position or his first sprint race, 79th. He only hit one out of five first time in on that occasion, but then a whole lot better the second week of racing in Östersund where he came 11th. His skiing is good, but he only hit 80% of the targets when he came 11th. Well, as expected, the time's very close there. Only four athletes having passed through. Sorry, nine athletes having passed through here, separated by seven seconds. Scott Gow, early start for him, but uh, some way off the pace set by Jakob Fack. Not a bad move. We see a lot of athletes tire on the last loop here because of the uh, altitude gain that Mike was talking about. And uh, if anyone's guilty, Mike, it tends to be the Norwegians who uh, go off hard. Bjorn Dahlen was really the first Norwegian to, uh, <laughs> to change his tactics and start to ski the first loop fairly steady. Yes, and I think this, this track profile, if you really... We always say it, but if, especially on this course with the climbing from this point on, if you take this first lap uh, uncomfortably fast, it really will uh, drop you back, I think, up to 12, 15 seconds on the last lap from where you could have been. So pacing is important, more so on this track. Samuelson, we'll see what he does. Two wins from two sprints. Been a brilliant start to his season. A uh, little bit up and down in uh, Ustersund, a couple of bad days on the range, but uh, to win both sprints, one with a clear shoot, one with a 90% hit rate, uh, absolutely outstanding. He certainly would have settled for that. And uh, actually, the Swedes doing pretty well on home snow. We'll see how the Austrians do this time round. So, fact to shoot, a bit more wind than they uh, encountered up in Sweden. I don't know where his target's gone. Oh, well, there we he, go. He's missed one. That was a little surprise. Quite changeable, Patrick. Uh, earlier, the wind was more from the left when they finished their zeroing. Now that was uh, swirling around here in this particular unique range where it, the wind does that often. Magaziev. Decent start from him. No harm in pushing the pace for the first 10 seconds or so and then just settle into your rhythm. Now, Samuelson, no, no wonder he was in a bit of a rush, Mike. Uh, <laughs> cutting, cutting it fine. Most people prefer to have an extra minute or so just to calm the nerves before the start. But Samuelson making sure everything was ready. And uh, away goes the timing wand. And uh, a good, powerful start from Samuelson. His skiing speed has been absolutely outstanding so far this year. Scott Gow working right to left. The first three are down. Needs this. He's got it. Good, solid shoot. The time is OK. Should be sub 30. Yes, easy under 30. 23.7. That will go nicely for the uh, Canadian. Did you see his pulse watch there? Uh, when the first shot was released, it was still on 184 beats per minute. So Scott Gow really at the top end there when he's firing that first shot after, what, some 15 seconds since he stopped skiing. I think that uh, Jakob Fack, bib number one, he was a little unlucky with the wind spiraling around when he came in. It seems to have at least settled in one direction. It all evens out at the end of the season, but there's certainly an element of luck uh, in just about every race, some races more so. Uh, 
It's always a bit disappointing when it's an Olympic race, Mike, but uh, if you think your mind back to uh, Vancouver, certainly uh, the sprint event there was uh, massively affected by the weather conditions. Oh, and uh, and so often it is at the at the major championships, and it'll be interesting Beijing in February. Now, Ada, yet to miss in the prone position. Can he keep that record going all the way to Christmas, maybe? <laughs> Another five down, only five to hit today, so uh, he stays on 100%, and uh, the shooting speed, uh, well, he's no longer the fastest. Um, but his accuracy this season has been quite outstanding. It, it really has, and I think that uh, the great ex-German racer Rico Gross, he's played a part in that. He raced alongside uh, Simon Eder for many years, and uh, shooting as fast as he did, you were always going to incur uh, or a higher risk of missing. And uh, Rico Gross has said, said, OK, you're a great shot, let's slow it down. But not by much, just enough to secure the hits. Samuelson, surprise, surprise, he takes the lead at 1.1 and uh, a two-second margin. So Samuelson ahead of his teammate Ponsoloma. And then we've got Povenitsin of Russia in third and Thierry Langer of uh, Belgium, who's had a good start. 6.7 off the pace, just ahead of Kern and Stefansson. You mentioned earlier uh, Kuhn's uh, good results, but the, the very first World Cup, he, he wasn't taken along. His shooting hadn't been reliable, but it really has improved. Uh, the second week in Ostersund is top 15 positions. Antonin Gigena. From La Fecla. What is he, 30 now? Getting on a bit. Um, really looked to be the number one star in the French team uh, post Martin Fourcade. Uh, but uh, Jacqueline, Fiel Maillet have certainly raised their game and he's actually struggled to get into the relay team since then. He has and the French, I think it, it makes a point, uh, they've only put Gigana in the first group and uh, no Norwegians in this first group which has uh, 32 athletes in it. Uh, so he is sadly the least favoured in the French team. Yeah, that's that's tough to contend with, isn't it, Mike? Especially when you're as, you've got as much potential as he has. Quite a lot of movement in the first three shots. Settled down for shots three, four, five, and uh, he's going to be what? Twelve seconds off the leaders at the moment. Johannes Kern, it is with uh, the fastest time after the first shoot. Over Nitsen uh, missing two, uh, he won't be happy with that. And the coach certainly didn't look uh, overly happy with that performance. <sighs> Ponsiloma no. is the reigning world champion in this event, but his season hasn't started well. A oh, little bit lucky. Split round over on the right-hand side. That goes high. His luck runs out on shot number two. Yes, uh, as the shoot went on, Mike, sort of uh, from the second shot, just gradually coming left. So that's... Uh, helped him out in a way. Yes, I think he figured out with uh, the, 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 the first uh, shot, yes, OK, and then it was missed high left, uh, high right. Everything was to the right. So the wind, which is coming from the left, is pushing the fall of the shot over to the right. I think he aimed off your right for his final couple of shots, aimed over to the left ever so slightly and managed to get them down. Kern, building his margin, 23.9, that's uh, healthy, 
And uh, should he go clear on the stand, then that will put a bit of pressure on the big names who've decided to start later. Big Drushni now for Ukraine. And Pigdrushny just outside the top 20 in both sprints so far as we go to uh, Sapala for Finland. And uh, things haven't been going too badly for him this year. 16th in the last sprint, worked his way up into fifth in the pursuit. That was a really good performance. Uh, missed on the first shoot, but otherwise cleared. Left to right, the wind, and uh, left to right, Sapala shoots. Sepala, we saw him adjust his sights, offsetting that wind, so he dragged his sights over into the left, uh, and I think he's got away with it. But it's not, it's not as simple as uh, if the wind's coming from the left, uh, adjust your sights that way, is it, Mike? There's a little bit of uh, elevation as well. Exactly, yes. The, when it comes from the left, because it, the bullet spirals so fast at, uh, it's clockwise at over, uh, what, 500 kilometers an hour, uh, the, the influence of the wind presses it down to the right as well. So right and low generally, the, the fall of the shot, if you had zeroed in the perfect dead wind. Now, why is it called the Magnus effect? I assume Mr. Magnus must have, must have, must have figured it. That's, that's a pretty weak answer. We'll work on that and uh, do our best to find out. I'm sure someone out there knows. Sebastian Samuelson uh, for his first shoot. Ski speed coming in. He's only one second, Patrick, ahead of his teammate Ponceloma, who's got six seconds on Johannes Kern. Yeah, but Ponsoloma has, uh, has he not missed? Yes, he, he has, he has. Well, well, he won the last sprint with a miss, so that won't put him off. But he's got some skiing to do, and the fact that he's only taken a second or so out of his teammate would indicate that he's not quite on the form or hasn't got as good a pair of skis as he had last week. Now, Jakob Fack, first to start, first in for the stand shoot. Well, Jakob, his, his strength used to be this part, the, the shooting aspect was always uh, a few seconds off in terms of his speed at his best. He won't be happy with three misses to date. <laughs> Get a sense of how steep this uh, climb is, the continual undulations, they were completely out of sight there, these three biathletes. And uh, it just uh, uh, relentlessly takes the strength and the sting out of your legs, all these short, sharp, steep climbs. Yeah, Kern looks impressive to me. Looks strong, good body position. Uh, I suspect there's been a few hours spent in the gym working on his core, but uh, looks much more solid than I've seen him in the past. Yes, and it's been somewhat two years since the German team have won a sprint race. So uh, Johannes Kern, maybe the big hope, and of course Benny Dahl uh, later, who won here at the World Championships 2017. Yeah, Dethieu just going uh, up towards 1.1. He started the season with a good sprint race up in Ustersund, finished in fifth just behind his teammate Jacqueline on that occasion. And uh, he shot the perfect score. Just thinking, Patrick, you mentioned the altitude here, the range is at 1,010 metres. And if I remember right, uh, in terms of oxygen saturation, you're, you're losing about 4% of the available oxygen at sea level when you come up to 1,000 metres. So all the athletes will be feeling this today, especially with Ustersund at only 200 metres over the last uh, two weekends of racing. Later probably had enough haemoglobin left in his blood to cope with that. Living down here the most, most of the time. Now, his prone has been immaculate. Standing not quite as good. Oh, that's rare to see him miss twice at home. And that's a real shame, Mike. Uh, it would have been lovely to see 
Ada go clear and set uh, a decent target for the rest. Oh, as you say at home, isn't it extraordinary where well, this is the range that you train and shoot somewhat 14, 15,000 rounds in the summer months and uh, it's his worst shooting performance so far this season. Yeah, Guzik, uh, Poland, the only man clear so far and has set a time of uh, 18.53 as you can see there and uh, Johannes Kern, he can certainly afford one miss and be inside that. Possibly two, should be two. Skiing well. He doesn't always fill me with absolute confidence, Johannes, uh, when it comes to stand shooting. That's Still, okay. Yeah, it's good enough to take the lead. Just keeping an eye on Hidden Salu, who was only 33 seconds behind. If this goes down, it'll be quite close between himself and Kurt. And it does. Uh, good ski race to the line between those two. Hidden Salu starting eight, Kern starting nine. Kern has gone left. Hidden Salu exits and uh, sets the new best time after the first shoot. Here comes uh, Johannes Kern. He's going to be comfortably inside the Finns split time. And the lead changes yet again. So Kern ahead of Hidden Salu. Guzik in three. Simonada of Austria with those two misses a minute off the pace now. That, that's disheartening for him. Gigana has a chance. How important for him to finish as the top Frenchman? Oh, it, it's such a big uh, pressure release uh, when you're chasing all the time a uh, favoured selection or Olympic selection. It's so much pressure. One good result changes everything. You can you can relax and focus on the race in a different way. Yeah, it's not going to happen though. Not today. Desir, Filmaye, Jacquelin should all improve on that. Eight out of ten. And tomorrow, just thinking as Patrick Favre sends the bad news around the track, uh, of course, tomorrow is the pursuit competition for the men, and Ada is really a disadvantage now, a long way behind the, the lead starting tomorrow. Maybe he's after the best, best improver badge. <laughs> <laughs> and to get that, you generally need to finish down in the 40s as uh, Loganoff exits here in uh, Hogfilson, and he's going to have some... Uh, Pretty tough competition behind him. The leader of the overall World Cup, Christensen, was he expecting that? Absolutely not. But he's been consistent. And uh, second in the first sprint, he finished fifth in the last sprint. And actually, Christensen was seventh here last year, Mike. So uh, he doesn't mind these tracks. Yes, he, he performs very well here, Chris, uh, Christensen. And what a, an amazing day for Christensen, the first time in yellow ever. Will that affect his performance today? I hope it doesn't. I hope it only improves it. <laughs> By which you mean you think it will. <laughs> uh, it, it nearly always does affect first time round. He'll get used to it soon enough if he can stay in uh, yellow. Ponsolomo, a miss in the prone. A miss, ooh, a close one in the stand. I thought uh, that wasn't going down, but he's uh, got away. Just one target uh, in all, left standing. And 18-15 from Kern. Is he going to match that? He's going to be just outside or just inside one or the other. Just inside, point three. I think uh, you mentioned his target missed. I thought that was a miss, uh, but a, a little bit of the yeah. lead hit the target. Yeah, less than 50%, I would suggest. <laughs> Me too. Uh, he was a little bit lucky. So, Christiansen underway, looking to uh, continue his fantastic run of results so far this year. And uh, starting number 51, so just about the halfway. 119 uh, races in all today. <laughs> That's more like it. This is uh, a hill that uh, Wolfgang Pickler used to enjoy. So, the French, who all tend to do the same sort of thing on the range, Mike. Um, certainly the top performers. I wonder whether the news goes through. So, a change in both uh, 
lateral and horizontal sights for Dethieu. He has a, a good time into the range, Patrick. He's only 4.9 seconds off Samuelson's time. Oof. Well. Oh, that's a disaster. Well, we said. Absolute disaster. The wind influence we mentioned earlier uh, to the right and low, and that's exactly where he went. He's so experienced. I thought he might have dragged the, the, the sides further over to the left and a couple more clicks up as well. Sebastian going through, Emilien Jacqueline just in front. Sebastian uh, uh, will be pretty happy with uh, his company on that second lap. Early start for Samuelson. I'm just wondering what the Swedes saw in the weather that the Norwegians and the French didn't. Yes, well, it was the fear of the depth of snow last night, and would it continue further into the morning, the heavy snow? But yes, the Swedes, uh, Samuelson maybe opted himself, put me in group one. That's where he, he prefers to go. So missing the prone. I was just about to say, he needs five to continue his winning streak. He's thrown that first one wide. I think we're going to have a new winner here for the season in this sprint. But Samuelson won't be far off the mark if he gets four. He doesn't. Three out of five. And uh, his worst result of the year. He's lying second in the World Cup standings, by the way. Jacqueline skiing well, as he always does. 2.5 inside coming in. That's behind Johannes Kern's time. That's good. Nice and solid. Big improvement on uh, this year. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, Jacqueline has been consistent. Top six of the, or well, top uh, four of the last two sprints, having finished second last weekend. Cross the line for Guzik of Poland. And uh, no sign of Jakob Fack. Wondering whether he's uh, pulled out. Well, Fack, uh, no, I think those three targets missed it. Jakob is just, uh, he's over two minutes off the, the lead pace at nine kilometers. Yeah. Kern on his last lap, pushing very hard. Just to give you the standings on that, uh, the second shoot. We've got Kern in second place. Ponsoloma actually leading 18-15 uh, with one miss. Scott Gow, uh, two misses and uh, down in second at the moment, but uh, he's going to drop down the order. Top 60, remember, qualifying for the pursuit. Top 40 getting World Cup points. Might just have done enough to achieve that. I mentioned earlier Scott Gauge starting his shoot process, uh, shooting process at 185 beats a minute. I saw as he crossed the line there, he's on 225. That's an incredible uh, level of heartbeat for a 30-year-old. <laughs> it makes me think the watch must be wrong. Uh, <laughs> I used to get that high. <laughs> 220 minus your age. After a few points, maybe, but uh, <laughs> that doesn't sound healthy. Lukas Hoffer now. 9.4 off Johannes Kern's time coming in. Relative to the fastest skiers. Offered down in the 11th place. 15 seconds slower than Samuelson on that first three kilometer loop. And here comes Kern. Uh, he's skied strongly all the way through. He's got Simonada tucked in behind him, who started a minute and a half ahead. And so Kern uh, is going to take a very, very comfortable lead here. This is uh, a potential podium finish, 26.05. That is uh, good work from Johannes Kern. Uh, had he gone 0-0, zero, zero, then uh, he may well have been looking at a top two. Great race, though. He'll be happy.
Just uh, the, the exhaustion, Patrick, across the line here. It's one of the few f uh, end or finish 150 metres that is quite, it doesn't show it here, but that is uphill. So that little extra exertion up to the line has everybody practically on their knees. Yeah, it's a good finish. Sharp or a 90 degree right hand turn into that home straight. And uh, always interesting with sprint finishes, Mike. Uh, I think really the key is to get ahead before you enter the home straight uh, because it's not quite long enough to benefit from the slipstream behind someone else and uh, generally do the do the overtaking under the road before you come into the stadium yes uh, it's quite tight there christiansen not looking quite as strong as as we saw last week and i'm really surprised Ponchiloma is has lost 11 seconds uh, and still a way to go before the finish line he's lost that on johannes kerner Yeah, surprise, he came out 0.3 behind and uh, 7.8, he was 3.8, 8.6, it was 7.8 and uh, as you say, 12.2 now. Have, have a look at uh, Loganov's time, he's four seconds faster than Samuelsson there. That's a massive turnaround in pace compared to last week in Sweden. Wow, and some pretty handy shooting as well. Uh, safely inside and uh, obviously adjusted the sights accordingly because uh, the majority of those were just over to the left-hand side. 12.1 inside, new leader, Loginov of Russia. And uh, Loginov, well, I suppose getting a decent start time, Mike. Yes, uh, midfield, maybe, uh, maybe the, the snow now a little more pressed down for those midfield athletes. Earlier on, the heavy snowfall last night, uh, I think it has had an impact. Well, uh, Ponsoloma wearing 14 as he comes in. Christiansen just heading into the range for an important shoot. We'll see what uh, sort of form he's on there. Nine, ten seconds. Uh, Kerner has really pushed the pace. So that's a 14-second loss to the German over that last 3.3K. Oh, Possibly... Me... He, he did match Samuelson on that first loop, Mike, and I'm starting to feel that maybe that was a mistake. Yes, uh, very, very interesting. And uh, just as Christensen comes in, I see that Johannes Tingisbo is setting the fastest times now on the track. He started one minute behind Christensen. Christensen, 16 seconds uh, of Loganov's pace coming in for the first shoot. It's almost a penalty loop, a drift. That was low, six o'clock. Is this the yellow bib effect? Is it the result of some very, very tough racing at the top? We've got, with the cross-country races, Mike, we often talk about how the Norwegians have to be on good form in November, early December, just to get in the team. Uh, it is a similar sort of effect in the biathlon. And I'm wondering whether Christiansen has uh, tried to make sure he's in the team for uh, the second half of the season by producing some good results early season. Yes, I think uh, as Prima shoots, another one who shot the perfect score, I think that is, uh, yeah, possibly you want to secure some top results and then you'll be carried through the season. So much movement in between each shot from Johannes. Well, the camera, um, sh sh surely, 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 surely they've learnt by now that he shoots from left to right. Uh, two misses from Johannes Tingis, but it's not going to happen. Ziggy Maze, you can see how much he's invested in the Norwegian team. He's absolutely furious with that, so disappointed. And uh, just waiting for Johannes to find his, uh, his top form. But he's a long way off it at the moment. It, it seems to be a confidence issue, really, with Johannes, where he's, he's slowed down his shooting speed, which often that absolutely helps, but a lot of movement as well through the rifle. It used to be dead steady, so he's changed some rhythm in terms of his shooting process. Yeah, we were talking about how Simonetta slowed his shooting down uh, just a little bit. But he, <laughs> he's still got the fastest time on the stand shoot, 21 <laughs> seconds. Uh, Povenitsin on 22, Leitner of Austria, 23. Scott Gow, good uh, shooting from him, 24.5 seconds. 
I feel great about this man today, Quentin Fiomaye, partly because he snapped that rifle on the last lap uh, in in uh, Ostersund last weekend. He's had a lot of trouble putting it back together, went back home to get it fixed. And often there's a psychological, well, almost pressure off. A little shimmy just to get the elbows bedded down. Cameraman is <laughs> having a bad day. <laughs> Feel me, eh? Is not. That's a great start from him. Now, 6.4 coming in. Uh, he's down. Logan off, Mike. That's extraordinary. An unbelievable time from him. Yeah, logging off uh, to take the field uh, and big names, uh, all the big names by that that margin after the first shoot, incredible speed. Yeah, logging off. Remember, won the individual in Antolts last year. He does tend to win uh, one race a year. He won in Oberhof in 2019. He won in Antolts in t uh, 2020. He won again in Antolts in 2021. And uh, is he heading for his fourth ever victory today? It's possible, it's very possible, as we see Seb Samuelson across the line. His run of victories has come to an end, crashing down in fifth already. He's going to struggle to finish in the top 20 with that time. And uh, Samuelson is going to have a big chase on his hands in the pursuit tomorrow. Jacqueline, uh, his time was excellent into the into the stand shoots, uh, but one target missed. That's another. I think the lap today, the penalty loop is is uh, 24 seconds on average for the better skiers. Well, Roman, Roman Reese. Yeah, Roman. Uh, will have realized that his teammate uh, bib number nine Kern is having a great day and that that often can ripple down through the rest of the athletes shot 19 out of 20 in the pursuit in Östersund. went from 18th up to only up to 13th but was shooting pretty well He took a long time to stabilize for the first shot, over 20 seconds, and then a, a two-second routine, but unfortunately, one target missed. Yeah. Mark Kirchner never gives away his emotion. Khalili. For Russia. Ski time a long, long way off... Uh, Ponsoloma at the moment, so he's a penalty loop behind. Needs five. Kalili, for me, is the next best big hope for the Russian team. We saw that at junior level. Yeah, and shooting like that, he can always produce some decent results. So he goes clear. Latipov with a miss. Now, Latipov's been a bit of an unsung hero so far this year. What is he? Top five in the World Cup standings. Uh, he's hardly had a mention uh, because he's not been winning or finishing second in races, but he's been very, very consistent. Uh, Kalili, his teammate, goes out in 10th despite hitting 10 out of 10, as we see Switzerland's number one, Benny Vega, across the line, 44 seconds behind at the moment. That's not a bad run from Benny Vega. He's, uh, he's, he's coming back to form, bit by bit. Yes, and uh, Benny has, uh, has podiumed here in the sprint race in the past. It was a long time ago, I think eight years ago, but uh, I, I expected something special from him today. It's good. Australia of Lithuania. Well, that's a fantastic run so far. Relatively uh, early start and lots of big names starting later, which uh, is good, certainly good for us. Uh, Ligrid starts number 93, uh, could uh, be interesting. Norath of Germany starts number 100. We've mentioned that Dominic Vindisch of Italy goes 119. And his teammate on the range at the moment, making a little bit of a hash of the standing shoot, another two wide. Uh, this is the worst shooting we've seen so far this year, Mike. Uh, yes, the wind is a factor. Uh, 
Anything else you put it down to? I, I really put it down to the altitude. It's not big altitude, but the effect from racing at, at just above sea level, you've got less time to recover, and I think that's what's making it more difficult today. So Loganoff with a chance. Oh! Well, that might be the end of his chances of taking his fourth career win. 20th in the World Cup standings at the moment. Well, he was uh, good after that first one. Talia Burt, still consistent, still a threat to the top three in the World Cup. And this looks like a nice shoot. Five out of five, no problem at all. Ski speed coming in, not uh, not nothing to write home about, but uh, he's experienced enough to know exactly how to pace this course here in uh, Hochfilsen. I was just looking at his past performances here, Patrick. Of course, he won this race, the sprint race, in way back uh, 11 years ago, 2010. He's been on the podium a couple of other times, 2015. But the last four races uh, Tarja Bo's had here, he's missed two out of five in the stand position. I hope he puts that right today. Well, Australia drops from third to fifth since the last split, but 42.3, still a good run from him. He's uh, dug very, very deep. He's got 24 hours to recover because he will certainly be part of the pursuit race. Top 60, remember, getting through to that. Fabian Cloud for France. Field Maye went clear, and Cloud joins him. That's okay. It's okay, but look at the time deficit into range 17 seconds. I expected better. So it seems like the French team have all dropped in terms of ski speed from where they were just, what, six days ago. Yeah, the traveling can do that. Uh, so the standings after that first shoot, Loganoff, Teribo, Johannes Kern, Phil Maillet, Jacques Alain, Giacomel of Italy, really good at the uh, early stages. Smolski is there. And then uh, Fabian Cloud racing for France. We've just seen him go through in eighth position. 20 seconds separating the top nine or ten. Now, Christiansen, a mistake to make up for. And to defend that yellow bib. Well, Samuelson's no threat, Mike, having missed. Johannes Tingisbo is still some 24 points adrift of Christiansen. If this goes down, he should be uh, he should be safe in yellow. Well, that's amazing. He came into the range though some 45 seconds off the pace, Christiansen. Yes, he's pulled effectively some time back, but he really needs a, a fabulous ski time now. Last 3.3. Eighteen ten was Loganoff's time. He's uh, gone down into eighth position, as you saw. Twenty seconds separating them. Lots to fight for. Ponsoloma has been so so impressive up to that six point six kilometer stage, Mike, and then fading in the uh, closing stages. Now Loganoff versus Kern. Five seconds to the advantage of the Russian coming out of the range. That is going to be an interesting battle because Johannes Kern looks superb over that last three k. What about Johannes? is Burr, what can he do? Two misses early on, 48 seconds adrift. He missed the third and the fifth in the prone. Uh, make sure of the fifth this time round. But three penalties, that's 450 metres. 4.5% uh, added to your race distance. Even Johannes Tingis on his best form cannot afford that. Simon Dessieux into the finish. He missed his three on the prone. Uh, oh, he must have struggled oh. around that second loop. That's, that's so painful. Uh, three out of five first time. It's, uh, it really is a, a negative situation. Nice shot of Field May 8. 50 metres the distance to the target. Oh. 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 Isn't it strange? Uh, and, and a lot of the athletes training up uh, in the Arctic Circle and uh, Norway, Sweden, Finland uh, in the early part of the season, all at low altitude. And, and I really do think when the big names are, are running out of air or stressing their stand shoot especially, uh, it, it is the altitude today. 
Jacqueline has missed uh, his opportunity. It's still respectable. He's going to be in the mix for the uh, pursuit. Only 23 seconds down on Kern. Just trying to keep an eye on the battle between uh, Loginoff and Ponsoloma out on the tracks. Loginoff is uh, behind Johannes Kern. 4.4 at 7.8. That is an unbelievable change. Uh, he was 5.1 behind, so he's lost nine seconds already over 1.2 kilometers. Uh, that's extraordinary, Mike. Have, have a look at the track as Ligrid starts, Patrick. The change that we can see in the track is now you have so many imprints, uh, the ski imprinting for the early start here, it, it appeared to be less uh, pressed in. And maybe there is a small factor there, but I'm surprised there's a big margin overall. Well, you're, you're saying it was quicker earlier on or slower? I'm thinking now maybe it was a little quicker earlier on. Uh, th that, that makes sense because Kern started nine. Um, Loganoff, as we know, started number 48. But I'm just wondering, you know, that first one, 1K or so, um, I, I just can't believe he's lost 10 seconds in that smaller space. It's, it's hard to believe. And, and I think the factor, Patrick, of course, IBU uh, have cancelled all fluorocarbon waxes on the basis they made that decision in July. Maybe the teams are, are struggling a little with waxing. <laughs> well, Roman Rees, another uh, good performance there from the German team. Uh, he's missed one target and he's in 11th place. Well, there we have it, Johannes Kern. Uh, with one penalty loop, he's still uh, top of the field, some 14 seconds ahead of Ponsoloma, who lost all of those 14 seconds on the final 3.3 kilometers. Desio missing three out of five, first time in. You cannot come back, no matter how fast you are, with missing three. Well, older brother, Claude, such a strong athlete, uh, really strong physique. Winning the Summer Biathlon Championships, that's on roller skis. Oh, he took uh, 8.5 seconds to the last shot and it didn't pay off. Nine hits out of nine shots fired, waited for that last one and he will be absolutely furious with that performance. What a shame. Lukas Hoffer, in the old days he would shoot zero, missing the last shot standing. Today it's the other way around, he's missed in the prone and he's managed to achieve all the stand hits. One minute behind though for Lukas Hoffer. Well, as the day goes on, it's fascinating. Philip Fjeld Anderson, 26 seconds off the pace to the range. Seems like it might be a Norwegian skis kind of day. Well, I think uh, we were talking about the weather and the snow conditions, how it can affect a race, Mike, and there's always a little bit of luck involved. Uh, I think today the luck has gone to those who were brave enough in to go into group number one. Um, some slightly extraordinary. Kern, we've mentioned, absolutely incredible speed over the last uh, section. Anton Smolski, now he was 25 behind coming in. He's going to match uh, Loganoff's time exiting, but... I will put a little wager on the fact that he is going to drop down over the next 3.3k. He's got the lead, got the green light, but Smolski, I think, is going to struggle with the conditions that we have out there now. Tarja Burr for Norway. Now, he's got the green light coming in, having gone clear in the prone. He could turn it around a bit. Mm. 
Loganoff, incidentally, has gone into third, just crossed the line. And uh, oh. 22 seconds down. Oh, tell oh. you, Nine out of nine. The last one goes wide. And with it, perhaps his chance of getting yet another win. They're, they, they're few and far between at the moment. Victories for Tanya Here comes Loganoff. Remember, fastest through the range, but he's lost 22 seconds plus the margins advantage that he had when he came out. And he was some five seconds up on Johannes Kern coming out of the uh, range. So uh, long enough, really struggling on the last 3.3. Look at Tataria Bo. This is a real opportunity. 4.9 behind. Uh, he really has to find his best ski speed over the final lap of 3.3 kilometers. Yeah, I, I, not only you know do we think that Kern had good conditions, Mike, I thought he skied superbly. I, I, I mentioned it early on, I don't think I've ever seen him look as strong. Uh, his body was strong, the balance was good, the efficiency was high, and uh, he still got himself uh, in, in a brilliant position. 14 seconds clear of Ponsoloma at the moment. Fabian Cloud for France, two misses, and his chance of challenging has gone. That's another, what? 48 to 50 seconds on the penalty loop and uh, with that sort of a deficit he's going to find himself fighting to stay in the top eight well what a strange day it is uh, johannes ting is a very strange scenario he's missed three targets and he's uh, still got to find some positions on the track he's 21st position at 7.8 he's moved up to 20th uh, at 8.6 kilometers, but a lot of work to do. Christiansen, leader of the overall World Cup at the start of today. Will 10th position be enough to hang on? Christiansen Samuelson on 178 and 175, respectively. Uh, Christiansen's been let off the hook slightly by the fact that Samuelson has not had a very good day, but Samuelson has finished in front of Christiansen. But I think by the time this is over, Mike, they're going to be so far down that there'll only be one point between them. So I think the margin is going to just uh, close by a point and Christiansen will stay in yellow for the pursuit race tomorrow. Jacqueline was uh, on 151, Taribo on 130, so uh, he's not going to challenge the challenge for the yellow bib. Johannes Tingis. Well, the last uh, point of checking, Johannes was uh, 106 behind. Uh, he's really dropping his pace incredibly, lost another six seconds in 400 meters. And Patrick, a lot of that 400 meters was downhill. He's lost six seconds to Kern on the downhill section. Well, perhaps we're talking a ski issue rather than a snow issue. I think so. I think it, it certainly appears that way. Well, if, if that's the case, Mike, then we'd expect Tadia Burt, who uh, has come out of that second shoot in third position, just 4.9 behind, uh, we would expect to see him drop down through the order and lose time to uh, the likes of Johannes Kern. Well, here he is. Uh coming off the penalty loop uh, for your final lap it's never a lot of fun and he's on his limit patrick it's uh, it's only going to go backwards from here unfortunately yeah he was three seconds ahead of kern going uh coming out of the range uh, and now he finds himself behind the german feel my eight two misses uh the time margin is not huge one miss and he would have been competitive and challenging for the top spot but uh, has to settle for fifth so the ski speed is still there for canton fiormaier it was a brilliant prone shoot mike uh but just frustrated with the two misses in the stand just thinking patrick and uh, yes it's biathlon but if he only missed one in the stand he could so easily have won today at 24.9 behind if only <laughs> exactly, famous <laughs> words. Now, Stirlerholm Lagrid. Second place in the overall last year. He won here second week last year, came ninth in the first week of racing in Hawk Wilson this time last year, the second week he took the victory in this, his first ever sprint race. Yeah, but he's had a mixed bag this season, hasn't he? He won the first race of the year, 37th, then to 6th. Then he didn't start in the pursuit. A uh, little bit of a throat scare. 
Tomshin. Oh, I was just going to say, might join those who've gone clear. And they're few and far between at the moment. Lazuski, Hidden Salu, Strolia, all producing what look like PBs at the moment uh, with perfect shoots. Prima has gone 10 out of 10. Khalili and Bormalini have gone 10 out of 10. Guzik has gone 10 out of 10. None of the big names have managed to hit all the targets. Quite amazing. I thought Thompson uh, was looking good there. His third ever World Cup race into the range. He was only 18 seconds down and then maybe the pressure got to him. Two missed targets standing. Kretschmar. It's good skiing, considered he'd missed a, a, a. Sorry, he'd cleared in the prone, but uh, again, another athlete missing two in standing. Uh, quite a strong wind uh, in his defence, Mike. It certainly picked up just 20, 30 seconds before he came in. And uh, someone of his experience should have picked up on that, but that might well have been the factor. Yes, and all the athletes opting for lanes 27, 28, 29, 30 for standing. There's a, a little more shelter there. Well, Tarja Boe, it's he's down in sixth position at the last point of checking, about 14 seconds behind, and he was only seven seconds behind at 7.8 kilometres. Wow, look at that, 18 seconds. And uh, <laughs> I'd love to be a fly on the wall in the Norwegian debrief after this one. Uh, normally the technicians get it spot on. Latipov, 41 behind. And uh, that puts him into seventh for now. Another top 10 finish. Remember, he started today in fifth position in the overall World Cup rankings, uh, Edouard Latyapov. So it's been a really solid start to his season as we see Smolski coming through into the finish. Uh, the time has already gone of Kern. Ponsloma at 14 is safe. Loganoff on 22. That could be close. Is he going into the uh, top three? I think he may well do. Anton Smolski of Belarus goes third. And as things stand, there are not a whole host of athletes out there who are going to challenge that time. So that could be uh, a first podium for Smolski. So this is the final rise. This is the, the big downhill section. And, and he was uh, at nine kilometers, Daria Bo. He was 18 seconds behind. I would imagine that's dropped quite a long way back on this more uh, downhill section of track. Twenty seconds separating the top three, and uh, Smolski is the man he's after, who's sitting on twenty point five at the moment. Ten seconds. It's going to be another tight one. Loganoff on twenty two, Jacqueline on twenty three, Phil Maillet on twenty four, and uh, he's certainly going to split the group. But where is Tadiabo going? He goes five, and uh, remember. He was right up in contention when he exited the range. He was sitting in third, just 4.9 behind, coming out of the range. So that's a massive loss. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've seen enough from Tadia this season, Mike, to know that his form is good. Uh, that has to be a, a snow or a ski issue affecting him on the closing stages. And, and the fact that everyone is getting slower relative to Kern, Mike, I think probably swings it in favor of a snow condition change that has uh, slowed things down. It's certainly a factor, isn't it? Um, interesting, what a fantastic day for bib number nine, Johannes Kern. And they didn't take him to the first World Cup because of his poor shooting. Yes, he's missed one today, but at the moment, and I think he'll remain the best in the field.
Well, strangely, at the finish, uh, only one Norwegian in the top 24. And, of course, that's uh, Terje Boot. Johannes Cloud. Yeah, sorry, Johannes Tingis is uh, 24th actually now uh, at the finish, 114 behind. Yeah, he's got a tough day tomorrow in the pursuit. Uh, be interesting to see how he does. Seldom does he start that far down the field. Seldom outside the uh, top five in terms of starting positions in the pursuit. And Cloud, uh, one of many to miss two on that second shoot. Bogdan Simbal for Ukraine, clearing the prone. And uh... well, the last shot wasn't even aimed there. The brain said it must have seen the image, but the reactions were so slow. And uh, zero and three penalties standing. Sinatra will not be happy as he radios that around the track. So Philip Horn uh, missing one, the same as Kuhn, his teammate, but uh, finds himself some 58 seconds behind. Well, Kuhn, uh, uh, sorry, Philip will be looking forward to, after Christmas, the World Cups go back to Oberhof. That's where this man is from. And that'll be nice to go back home and uh, always feels better at home. Philip Field Anderson, 106 off the lead as 50 seconds of that due to the two penalty loops picked up in the prone position. One of the later starters for Austria, Lucas Pitzer. We say it feels better at home, Mike, but the shooting generally <laughs> is a lot harder at home. Well, yeah, do you, you know what? You, you don't often expect that when you know the wind situation here. You know what it feels like. These biathletes, the Austrians, use this track in the summer. It's all tarmac, asphalt underneath. But then you have the added pressure. Two shots fired, two targets missed. Again, it's still big experience for Lukas Pitzer. He, he has had a race out here previously last year. He's only had one World Cup experience, came 99th on that day. Now, can Ligrid do something uh, about raising the Norwegian flag, which has uh, had a bad day so far? No, he misses his first in the stand and his second. Just checks he's on the right target. I think there'll be a shake of the head after this one. From top five, Patrick, to what he'll be finishing now in the 30s. Uh, it's expensive missing two targets at this stage. Yeah, and Ligrid's time was good, Mike. Very good. That's probably the best skiing we've seen from him so far this year. So I'm slightly puzzled why uh, so many are good on the first two laps. Uh, Tadia Bo was there, Ligrid was there. We've seen a number of athletes who are contending after that second shoot, but no one can match Kern on the last loop. So we, we can't say it's all due to the snow. I think Johannes Kern perhaps pacing it better than anyone else. And, and absolutely on a mission. If you get top six, you're secure in the German team for an Olympic slot. There's a whole, just do it on one day. He, he was so psyched up this morning, Kern. And Eric yeah. Lesser, this is this is good from Eric into the range. Yeah, but another 20 seconds would have been handy because that was an excellent shoot. Matches the best 
uh, in terms of accuracy, obviously, and only three or four, I think 22 is about the quickest we've had in the prone position so far. Lesser goes out 11th position, and uh, a top 10 for him would be good work. Who, are your fa who do you favour for the uh, German relay team? Yes, I think uh, Eric didn't show great ski speed weeks uh, on week one or week two in the individual races, but as a relay man, he's excellent. So I would have Eric Lesser, now definitely Johannes Kern, Benny Dahl, and uh, maybe Philip Horn uh, would be my fourth uh, athlete. Wow. Ah. I thought the Belarus team, it's, it's a growing team, I think, in confidence, Patrick, and stature, sixth uh, in the relay, and that was with a few targets missed. Uh, but, but there's a growing strength, uh, men and women, in the Belarus biathlon side. Well, Johannes Kerner, he's got a 14-second advantage, hasn't he, into the pursuit competition tomorrow. And uh, all the big names behind him and chasing his time. Yeah, I can't see anyone else chasing down that time. And uh, anyone starting within 20 seconds is in a, a good position. Uh, it's new territory, obviously, for Johannes Kern. Never won a World Cup before. Uh, when did he start? I think he joined the World Cup circuit in 2012, started his biathlon career back in 2004. So he's, uh, he's been working at this for a long, long time. Without that miss in the prone, he would have been right up there. Oh, he must be. Time is still good. Look at the tension, though, Patrick. He knows how well he's skiing. Oh, he's so tense to try and make these uh, targets count. Well done. Four out of five. It's not going to be a bad run for Philip Norath, uh, and he keeps his success going. I think Mark Kichner will be pretty happy with the way things have gone. Maybe we have to consider him for a place in the German relay team after what he's done so far this year. Philip Fjeld Anderson for Norway. Two misses. Most are missing in the stand. He missed in the prone. 125 down. This is uh, a poor day for the Norwegians. Well, Norrath, if look at his time, Patrick, uh, the coaches will be telling him that you're 18th, get 10 seconds back and you'll be 10th. Yeah, we now have 20 seconds still separating the top three. Uh, top 10 separated by 42. The margin down to 60, as I'm sure you know, is nearly always 2 minutes 30. Uh, at the moment, it's 2 minutes 27. Backen, who put in a very good first leg of the relay for a victorious Norwegian team up in Östersund. And uh, like most of his teammates, he's missed two. That puts him 124 behind. Uh, the Norwegians are all going to be on the chase when it comes to the uh, pursuit. We've got Johannes Tingisberg, 26, Backen at 31, Anderson at 32. Just looking at the finish results, uh, the first starter today, Jakob Fack, he's hanging in there to the top 60 to get a start tomorrow, but it, it's, uh, he may well be pushed down. He's uh, in 56th position. So, Kern, Ponsoloma, Smolski. Anyone 
who put some money on that podium has done themselves very well because uh, Kern, first ever win. Ponsoloma, yeah, world champion sprint, but hasn't shown that sort of form so far this season. And Anton Smolski of uh, Belarus, absolutely outstanding. He comes from Minsk. There'll be a party there tonight uh, celebrating his podium finish, finishing just uh, at the moment ahead of Loginov and Tadia Bo, who make up the top five. We've got Thomas Bormalini down in 23. Uh, we still got to remember, I haven't seen how um, Dominic Vindish is getting on, Mike. He's the only one, I think, starting after uh, Norath, who I think has a possible chance of winning. Well, another two shots missed. Jean-Marc, uh, well, he's got a, he has a podium position for his team at the moment. Of course, Ponsiloma second place, and that's missing one target. And Ponsiloma faded so much on the last day, uh, 3.3 kilometers. Well, you'd expect, Patrick, that Ligrid is going to lose another four seconds at least. So that, for me, will put him down in 15th. He'll be pushing Christensen's time, actually, 15th to 18th position at the end of the day. Very late start for Eric Lesser. I do apologise for him. Missed his... Uh his uh, position two wins in his career but he hasn't had one since 2016 and uh, there you see the softer snow on the climb I'm not sure that is what's responsible for some of the very very slow times we've seen on this last loop and I think so many factors and that's why winter sport is great because <laughs> you do get some luck sometimes and uh, less uh, to your advantage on other occasions but uh, I, I think with the new very soft powder snow um, and then now it's transforming, almost a little damper on the track at minus seven earlier, minus two now. A, a little more suction under this new snow. Yeah, perhaps the, the, the uh, ski base was poorly selected by the Norwegians. That's a possibility. Now, Ligrid, coming out of the shoot last time round, was down in 19th position, 34 seconds behind. So he, like the two Burr brothers, like um, Christiansen, like Ligrid, as we're about to see, has lost a massive amount of time on this last loop. The effort is there, but the ski speed isn't. And Ligrid is going to have uh, a hard day tomorrow, down in 19th position. So at the moment, uh, he's where he was after he came through that last shoot. But uh, I suspect he may be pushed down a couple of slots. What a now, strange we, day in Biathlon, isn't it? Yeah, we need Lesser to go clear. That will really liven things up. And uh, Johannes Kern might have to put his celebrations on hold. He has to get five. It has to be quick. He needs a 21 second shoot. From poles down to poles up. And even then, he is going to be chasing. Worst possible start. Last two in the prone target. A little bit high with the fourth one, but four good shots, one wayward, and that has ruined his chances of a top three. But in terms of the finish, Mike, if we add, say, let's say 30 seconds, which will be roughly the margin behind, he's still looking at seventh or eighth. Norath through 9K, 1,000 metres to go for the... German and 
four seconds to eighth position. Uh, they're absolutely right. And uh, if he manages that, he will depose Lazuski of Belarus, who's lying uh, in eighth at the moment. So Belarus, Mike, they've got third and eighth at the moment, which uh, goes down as their best day of the season. Yes, that, that's a great uh, day for the Belarus team. Shooting has been good from most of them. Uh, only eight so far, the, the perfect score on the range. I thought we might get between 10 and 12 athletes hitting the perfect score. Well, the race isn't over quite yet. Pulse of 167 on the first shot there. And dropping so quickly. Now pulse rate 142. That's the art of biathlon. Recover so, so quickly. And Yaliot now with that shooting could well put three Belarus athletes into the top 10. Uh, coming out, he's down at, well, he's down in at 40 seconds, but if he can keep that margin, uh, he will go up into the top 10. But I think that's going to be a, a tough ask with the uh, conditions as they are. Norath now into the finish. Excellent ski speed there from Norath. Take those two penalty shots away and that's it. That's a winning time. Yeah, he's gone from 18th to 8th on that last loop, Mike. Uh, <laughs> may, maybe <laughs> there's a lot of speculation going on today, but maybe the Germans have just got the waxing and the skis right, whereas everyone else has got it wrong. That's, uh, of course, a possibility. It is, and uh, I, th I think it's safe to say their skis are running brilliantly well and uh, certainly better than most of the other teams. Belarus team uh, getting it very right uh, in terms of ski preparation as well. Well, that is going to throw Tyshenko right up the order. Great shooting, 28 seconds, not the quickest. Uh, just looking in terms of shooting times on that... Uh, Second shoot, Christian Gao, 19.8. Runnels of Canada, 20.9. No guessing what they've done over the summer. And then Simonader on 21 seconds. The top three in terms of shooting speed. Now, Vindish. Late start and uh, his chance is blown on the first shoot. A lot to be gained if he goes clear. Four out of four. <laughs> nice finish. Very nice finish from Dominic Vindish. And uh, the margins, if he can maintain, uh, what's he going to be, uh, 50 to a minute behind, uh, he's looking at a top 20, despite missing two on the first shoot. Out he comes. Well, Vindish really needed this today, Patrick, uh, to take him off the last favoured, or the least favoured group, really. And I think that will, uh, mission accomplished today. Uh, Lukas Hoffer is the best Italian so far, but only 22nd position. Yeah, and Hoffer at a minute behind. So uh, if Vindish has got something left in the tank, maybe he can fight for that. Uh, very, very tight from 20 down to 40. Only a matter of uh, 20 seconds or so. So, Kern it is who will uh, top the table at the end of the day. We still have a few athletes out on the uh, run. His first ever World Cup win. Brilliant day for him and uh, well deserved. He had a second place in Pakuka back in 2019. He got another podium in Oberhof uh, in 2020. But uh, in 2021, he gets his first win. Absolutely sensational. Uh, Ponsolomo, Mike, the world champion, um, didn't look too hot early on, but uh, recovered well, having missed in the prone. Just one target missed. And then Smolski, 10 out of 10, and he puts uh, Belarus on the podium for the first time this year in the men's races. And uh, he also getting a PB, third place, 20.5 behind. Yes, a fabulous day for Smolski. And uh, at only 24-year-old, now he's a podium placed uh, athlete and that will give him a huge amount of confidence for all of his future races well here is Smolski
Johannes Kern started a minute and a half behind Simon Ada. Wasn't long before he overhauled the Austrian. And he'll be glad that this win has arrived just now. He got the best of the conditions, it seems.
giving um, uh, we need Johannes Kühlmann in Bozzi Roma, Anton Polski, Alexander Lodinov, Daniel Hüll and Emilie Schakler. Johannes, first ever win. I mean, how's that feeling? Oh, it's a great feeling. I think everybody likes the feeling to be good. And to win is uh, something that happened some years ago the last time. And to win in the World Cup, how's that? That's crazy. I think everybody is dreaming of winning one time. I think my last win was in IBU Cup 2015 or something. Yeah, it's a good day for me, crazy. You've been so fast in the last loop, what did you think? Uh, well, not so much. First I was happy with my shooting and uh, I tried to stay calm out of the range because uh, it's always far to the finish line. Last week I had quite a bad last kilometer, so I tried to save some energy for that. You did great, congratulations. Thank you.
Felix Herrmann darf ich mir dann auch die Siegerehrung und Bier nur Deutschland, eine ganze Nation jubelt heute mit Johannes Kühn. Und wir ein wenig mit dem Johannes auch. Weil damit wird natürlich wieder mal untermauert, dass Hochfilzen nicht umsonst immer wieder den Namen No Filzen riecht. WIBU World Cup Biathlon Hochfilzen 2021 Presentation Today Sprint Competition Man. Wir kommen zu den Top 6. The flowers are awarded by Niklas Carson and Roswitha Stadelhofer. An der dritten Stelle in third place, representing Belarus, aus Weißrussland, Anton Smolski. And Hochfilzen, Tirol, Austria, here is the winner, Erster, Sieger or Champion, representing Germany, aus Deutschland, Johannes Kühl. Unforgettable day, the top three, Johannes Kühn, Martin Bonsignoma, Anton Smolski. A 
an der vierten Stelle in Fourth Place representing Russia für und aus Russland Alexander Loginov. Die gesamte deutsche Mannschaft feiert mit ihrem heutigen großen Helden ein Traumtag für den Biathlon-Sport im Allgemeinen bei diesem Verhältnis und für diesen Mann im Besonderen nochmals der Applaus für den jetzigen Weltcup-Sieger Johannes Kühl. Have a good rest of the day. Be proud about yourself. Enjoy the rest of the day and uh, see you tomorrow. And never forget this day. Schlumberger Sekt für Johannes Kühn. Die österreichische Antwort auf Champagner. Der wird heute gespritzt werden im Hotel Unterlegner dann in St. Jakob. Das war's vorab. Wir hören und sehen uns dann hoffentlich in vier Stunden.